It's my pleasure to introduce the next uh, set of panelists. Uh, first, Logan Pelt, who's an associate professor in international history at the University of Copenhagen and is co-director of the project Many Roads in Modernity, Southeastern Europe and its Ottoman Roots. He was Stanley J. Seeger Fellow uh, at the Program in Hellenic Studies at Princeton University uh, in 2008-2009, and before that, he was attached to the Danish Parliamentary Commission, uh, Commission Investigating Danish Security Intelligence Service uh, in 2007-2008. Uh, he was a member of the Volkswagen Foundation's working group on captive states, divided societies, political institutions of southeastern Europe in historical comparative perspective uh, from 2005 to 2007. He's the author of four bo books, most recently Military Intervention in a Crisis Democracy in Turkey, The Benderis Era and Its Demise in 2014. Menderes. Uh, yeah. Menderes. Menderes. Yeah. Okay, uh, and uh, particularly relevant for the talk today, tying Greece to the West, American, West German, and Greek relations, 1945 to 1974. It came out in 2006. All right, thank you very much for your generous introduction, and thank you very much to Katarina and to Andre also for inviting me here to the conference of the Greek Consent. Uh, also for inviting me to come to California for the first time in my life. <laughs> the only regret I have is that it didn't take all the few days more so I could stay here afterwards. Um, <laughs> but from a political, from a prof professional point of view, I'm also glad that I have another chance to talk about uh, a subject I've been working on for quite many years, uh, Greek-German uh, relations. And today, of course, it's uh, concerning uh, West Germany's uh, policy towards Greece during the Junta period in what I have called the context of uh, burden sharing. I shall come back to, to that uh, term a little bit uh, later. Um, quite many years ago, when I first started to study Greek-German relations, and in particular uh, West German Greek relations, I often found it necessary to state my motives for having uh, chosen uh, this subject. Now, for the last seven years, I hardly ever had to state any reason for why this is uh, important, because West Germany Germany is now regarded as a very important country in relation to Greece. But still, there are st uh, some few points I would like to make also today regarding uh, the state of the Greek economy and society, and also regarding Greek politics uh, at the time that West German Greek relations were first established, or perhaps we should say re-established, that is for another discussion, but at least when we started just in the early post war period. In the very early post-war period, uh, Greece belonged to the periphery of Western Europe. Uh, Social economic composition deviated significantly uh, from the bulk of uh, the other Western European countries. Uh, this observation can also, uh, also holds true uh, for Greek political affairs, dominated as they were by civil war and its aftermath. But what is important to pay attention to in the, uh, working with Greece in the context of uh, Western Europe and the, uh, and, and the US is actually that these, precisely these aspects of Greek realities played a crucial role in the process this, that, that ended in the formulation of the Truman Doctrine and therefore also, at least to some degree, in the enactment of the European Recovery Program, the so-called uh, Marshall Aid Program. Uh, Greece too, like the other Western European countries, became a recipient country of martial aid. She joined the Organization of the Economic, uh, European Economic Cooperation, as well as the Council of Europe, uh, and the same trade was continu uh, trade continued uh, by Greece's accession to NATO as a full member in uh, 52, and finally by Greece's association to the uh, EEC in 1962 as the first country ever to join the six on such a basis. <coughs> now, how does West Germany uh, fit into all this? Uh, regarding, let's say, the broader framework, uh, we should note that Bonn's economic and political commitment to Greece in the 50s and 60s and 70s rose in tandem with the decline of US non-military aid to Greece. As early as in 1950, that is, within a year after the establishment of the Federal Republic of Germany, 
West Germany became the most important destination for Greek exports. In 1950, the first large and comprehensive West, Greek, uh, West German Greek agreement on trade and finance was signed. From 1957 onwards, West Germany became the most important source of Greek imports. In 1958, Bonn granted a 200 million Deutsche Mark state loan to Greece. This was the first of its kind since the crisis ridden 1930s. Between 1959 and 1961, West Germany played an active and crucial role in the process that resulted in Greece's association with the EC. In 1963, Bonn granted Greece a new credit of 200 uh, million Deutschmark. And from about the same time, West Germany became an ever more important source of invisibles generated by the increasing amounts of immigrant remittances from Greek guest workers, Gastarbeiter, uh, in Germany which was a trend which lasted well into the 1970s. So it's a very close political and economic connection between Greece and Germany. The uh, early expansion uh, was based on structures and connections predating the Second World War. Expansion in the post-war period, however, took place uh, under the American umbrella of power. In fact, uh, we can say that the expansion of West Germany's role in Greece uh, took place with the tacit connivance of the US to the extent that it makes sense to talk about a far growing burden sharing. The German Chancellor, um, Konrad Adenauer, the post war Chancellor, would tell his ministers uh, that uh, Germany's financial commitment to Greece was a way to enhance uh, the security of the West as a whole. And in the corridors in Bonn, you would often hear the following slogan that Berlin shall be defended in Kavala. Uh, it is through this prism of burden sharing uh, that I shall discuss West Germany's relations with Greece during the Hunza period. <coughs> While Washington's immediate reaction to the coup d'etat in April 1967 was to suspend the shipments of what they call selected major items of equipment uh, in the, great, uh, in the grand, uh, grand Aid Program to Greece. West Germany, which was Greece's second largest supplier of arms at the time, uh, chose what you can call a more lenient policy. The German Minister of Foreign Affairs, Auswärtiges Amt, recommended uh, the continuation of military aid that had been allocated within the framework of NATO. Bilateral military relations between Germany and Greece should also be continued. However, Auswärtiges Amt warned the German government uh, that it should be cautious regarding such contacts which would attract most publicity, for example, uh, like the exchange of military officers and so forth. The main goal of a German policy, of Bonn's, Bonn's policy towards uh, the, the Greek regime, should be avoid forcing the Greek government into isolation. And they went on. Such a move would only encourage national socialist tendencies in the government, or would enhance the danger of Greek neutralism. That is, it would uh, end up, in the worst case scenario, in the minds of the Germans, to playing into the hands of the Soviet bloc. And they went on. If for, if, for instance, Greece was expelled from the Council of Europe, the regime might well decide to take NATO, uh, Greece out of NATO. And it was emphasized that as long as Greece was a member of NATO, it should be the policy of the Federal Republic that Greece be treated like any other member country. Regarding the important economic relations, again according to Auswärtiges Amt, that is the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sanctions have never been able, so they said, to influence the political development in a country in the direction of democracy. And for that reason, the government should continue to develop its economic relations with the new regime. And the same opinion on the economy was also reflected in Bond's negative stance on the decision by the European Investment Bank not to release a $10 million loan or road constructions uh, in Crete. The bank's decision 
uh, was connected to the so-called freezing of the Greek association with the EC, uh, that is the breaking off of uh, formal negotiation on the agricultural policy, and also by the decision by the European Investment Bank to block uh, further credits to the Greek regime. Uh, at the same time, Bonn also made clear that it was of the opinion that the new Greek government was undemocratic and blemished the reputation of the Western alliance. And to ameliorate this state of affairs, the federal government should urge the Greek government and the royal palace to restore constitutional rule. But at the same time, voices were also heard in Bonn in the state system and the state apparatus that uh, one should not discredit the fact that the new regime seriously intended to fight communism. Soon a new factor made itself felt in West, uh, Greek West German relations, namely the factor of public opinion. We are uh, about the time or in the period of, his, of 68. Now, 68 began before 68, in the case of Germany. Uh, in the early 60s as a reaction against what we call the Nazi past and the tendency to forget the past, uh, hypocrisy, Western hypocrisy. In uh, 68, uh, 67, uh, there were clashes between uh, police and demonstrators because of, the, because of the visit of the Shah of Iran to, to West Germany in 68. Uti Dutske, who later came to Denmark, was killed, or sorry, wounded, uh, and so forth. So this fact uh, and the uh, circumstance that, that the SPD, the Social Democratic Party, was part of the government made the German government at least sometimes open to such influence. Uh, and we have a very good example, a strong example, uh, dating uh, to the 8th, 28th of February, or to a decision by that date, uh, 68. Then after pressure from the Social Democrats and the Bundestag, that is in the parliament, uh, the German government decided to terminate uh, bilateral military aid to Greece. However, a few months later, in May 68, a resumption of U.S. Uh, shipments of heavy arms to Greece was discussed. And these prospects uh, were met with strong opposition from public opinion, not only in the U.S., but also in a number of European countries. Uh, it was a public opinion which was becoming more and more hostile to the Hunza, and this was in particular true for the Scandinavian countries. Uh, during the early hours after the coup time 67, the colonels imprisoned Andreas Papandreou, and in the following days another six to 7,000 people uh, were put under arrest. According to a report dated the 24th of August 67 by an American observer in Sweden, and I quote, the intensity of interest in Andreas Papandreou's case in Scandinavia is difficult to imagine. End of quotation. According to the same observer, the case was covered in detail in the press and had become an important political issue and a subject of concern to ministers and members of parliament in all the Scandinavian countries. A major item on the agenda of the Scandinavian Foreign Minister's uh, conference in Helsinki was a possible formal protest regarding uh, the Papad Rail case under the European Convention of Human Rights. And in September 67, Denmark, Norway, Sweden, and Holland filed a complaint concerning violations by Greece uh, at the Euro European uh, Commission for Human Rights. And I should add, uh, for the case of Denmark, that there was a growing public opinion and uh, critique of Greece, which goes back to uh, the time when uh, Gregorios Lambrakis was killed. Uh, Left-wing intellectuals began to, to make the case uh, that Greece uh, was a problematic country with its uh, so-called right-wing state. And the marriage between King Constantine at the time and uh, Princess and later Queen Anna Maria uh, didn't make that any better, especially not after Tajuriana in, in Athens, when for the first time after the coup and the only time since 1920 there were protests and demonstrations at the Royal Palace in Copenhagen. The last time was in 1920 when the king had attended a coup against the government but lost the case. So it was a big case at the time, which was slowly getting in, especially into the Social Democratic Party in Copenhagen because some young activists belonged to that party. I might have to, we can discuss that later. So it was a big issue at the time uh, in, in the Danish public. 
Um, it was against this background uh, that the Council of Europe voted to take steps to expel Greece on the ground that the Greek government was making no progress in returning Greece to constitutional rule. Uh, this situation forced West Germany to balance her interests carefully. On the one hand, as a major supplier of military aid to Greece, because of her strong economic interest in the country, and because of her commitment to burden sharing with the United States, Biden was compelled to pay attention to security considerations. On the other hand, uh, regard to public opinion, as well as to West Germany's position as a leading European country, made the question of solidarity with the European partners crucial too. And in the end, one opted for a compromise. Rather than be expelled, Greece should be given the opportunity to withdraw from the Council of Europe of her own accord. Um, from Boyd's point of view, this position was all the more important as Greece was under mounting pressure in NATO too, primarily due to condemnation by Denmark, <coughs> Norway and Holland. And in the first half of 1969, there was another science, but yet another member country of uh, the EEC, and a major one too, Italy was ready to raise a voice in NATO against the Junta. Uh, in contrast to the criticism, Levied against the political shortcomings of the Greek regime, Bonn emphasized the importance of the military aspects of Greek uh, NATO relations. The German Minister of Foreign Affairs, the famous Willy Brandt, told his Italian, and he was a social democrat, which you know, of course, told his Italian counterpart, uh, counterpart Pietro Roneni, that West Germany urgently wanted a decision regarding full resumption of arms deliveries to Greece. West Germany had a firm commitment towards NATO to supply Greece and Turkey with military aid. So here, Brandt was uh, much more in line with Washington's policy vis-a-vis -vis Greece, in that he was placing uh, the military exigencies first in relation to the constitutional issue uh, in Greece. Um, while the uh, while the Danish, Norwegian, and Dutch governments were bringing increasing pressure to bear in Greece uh, at the Council of Europe, U.S. embassies in Europe were instructed to urge restraint on fellow members regarding the proposal to expel Greece from the Council of Europe. On the 6th of December, uh, Secretary of State William Rogers raised the issue with uh, Willy Brandt, and he told, who was now at the German Chancellor also, uh, and uh, he told him that he hoped that it would be possible uh, to offer something less drastic than an expulsion of Greece from the Council of Europe. Worst case scenario, according to Rogers, would be if Greek membership of NATO should come into question. So Rogers is uh, clearly uh, attempting to use the specter of Greece's uh, expulsion from NATO as a means to move the German Chancellor. Brandt, on his part, promised to do whatever possible to avoid the case of Greece being forced to leave. However, and that is from the Council of Europe, I should say. However, should the case come up in such a way, Bonn had no choice but to vote for expulsion. On the 11th of December, 1969, a day before the future of Greece's membership of the Council of Europe was to be decided, the West German cabinet reached the conclusion that whatever, whatever happened to Greece at that meeting, it should not affect, if at all possible, the membership of Greece in the Atlantic Alliance or her association with the common market. The last point indicates that Bonn was also ready to defend Greece against those in the EC who at that time wanted the regime issue to have a further, uh, have further implications for the Greek future in the uh, common market in the EC. After Greece's resignation from the Council of Europe, Auswärtiges Amt, the German Minister of Foreign Affairs, concluded that uh, Greece's remaining links with NATO and the EEC should be strengthened whenever possible. 
Uh, on the 13th of April 1970, and now we turn our attention back to NATO, the so-called Defense Review Committee of NATO urged all members of the Alliance to aid Greece in maintaining and strengthening her armed forces as Greece could not meet such costs alone. However, a strongly critical attitude to the Greek government by Norway and in particular Denmark prevented the Defense Planning Committee from bringing, being able to adopt measures to supply Greece with new weapons at that time. William Rogers now turned to Bonn in an alarmed mood, warning that such actions would cause a split in NATO. And in this situation, Bonn swung into action. On the 23rd of May, that is just prior to a NATO meeting in Rome, the German Minister of Foreign Affairs, Walter Scheel, assured Rogers of his support of Washington stands, and I quote, I share your concern. Today I sent the Danish Minister of Foreign Affairs a letter in which I directed his attention to the severe consequences that any discussion at the meeting of the internal situation in Greece could have, and I have asked him to abstain from any criticism of internal politics of the Greek regime. End of quotation. Nevertheless, Hartling, the Danish Minister of Foreign Affairs, brought up the issue and voiced criticism against the junta. He was supported by the Norwegian and Dutch Ministers of Foreign Affairs in this uh, theory. At the same time, the resumption of full military U.S. aid was discussed at a meeting between the Greek Minister of Foreign Affairs, Panayotis Pipinelis, and Rogers. Nevertheless, nevertheless, a date convenient for the announcement still had to be found. And uh, this prevarication only made the hostile attitude of the Scandinavian countries to the junta all the more troubling to Washington. The American embassies in Copenhagen and Oslo received instructions from the State Department to stress to the Danish and Norwegian foreign ministers that, and I quote, the United States consider unacceptable the attitude of the Danish and Norwegian government on the above issue, that is, on military aid to junta. Um, on 22nd of September 1970, in the middle of the Jordanian crisis, better known perhaps uh, as Black September, uh, the United <coughs> States made its decision uh, public. As no <coughs> action was taken on part of the junta in direction of reintroducing parliamentary measures, the Scandinavian countries would continue their attacks against the junta at the biannual meetings of NATO's uh, Council of Ministers in the subsequent years. Uh, it was in this context, and immediately after the resumption of full military aid to Greece, that on the 7th of October 1970, the uh, United States Washington began to re-evaluate the possibility of selling a squadron of F-4 Phantom aircraft to Greece. The decision to sell these uh, aircraft must be seen in the context of competition with France, who was a major rival on the international arms market. Furthermore, the fact that Washington was beginning to consider home porting in Greece made it even more important to find a modus vivendi with the Junta. And to this end, an accommodation with the colonels in the Phantom case was crucial in particular because the case was expected to feature high on the agenda of U.S.-Greek military relations for the years to come. Uh, the Greek government had expressed and went on expressing dismay at the cost of the phantoms, claiming that France was ready to reduce the price of her Mirage aircraft. However, Washington rejected any thought of price reductions. And this, of course, made the whole issue of financing uh, the, the package uh, crucial. And it was against this backdrop that Washington decided to make an attempt in a low-key fashion and informally to make West Germany participate in the F4 transaction case, in particularly, in particularly with a view of the potential financial problems that was formulated in Washington. So Washington wanted uh, Bond to undertake burden sharing vis-a-vis the Hunter in the Phantom case in a very specific manner. 
I guess we should also see these attempts uh, or efforts uh, made by the uh, Nixon administration to evade control from Congress, which at that time was becoming increasingly uh, critical of uh, the US policy towards Rwanda. But at the same point, at this point in time, the public criticism of Rwanda was increasing in West Germany too. So while Bonn, at the end of the day, decided against participating in the Phantom case, the issue of West German military aid to Greece continued to be a very sensitive one for the German government. This clearly has transpired in the Bundestag at hearings which were concerned uh, or concerned uh, an eventual resumption, uh, which goes down to 68, of bilateral military aid to Greece. This issue, this prospect, was highly unpopular among uh, Freie Demokraten, uh, among liberals, and among uh, social democratic members in the uh, Bundestag, very uh, different foreign relations and economic uh, committees. But the issue also caused a rift in the government, uh, even among the SPD ministers. According to information Washington had obtained from the source of the German Minister of Defense, it was a well-known fact that the Minister of Defense, the SPD member Helmut Schmidt, supported the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Scheel, who wanted a resumption of military aid to Greece, while it was still unclear at the time uh, what Willy Brandt would actually finally decide. This uh, kind of dilemma or discussion uh, makes it clear that the German government were restrained uh, not only by the parliament but also by splits or potential splits within the SPD. However, if we look at the whole period of the Funza uh, in a more um, comprehensive perspective, uh, we have to conclude that Germany continued her policy of burden sharing with the US also during the Funza period meaning that she actually continued a policy which was enacted as early as in 1950. Uh, there is a strong element of continuity in the German policy towards Greece, including the Hunter period. Uh, just a few more words before I finish, and that regards the post hunter period, <coughs> and that is that after the collapse of the Hunter, uh, West Germany retained her pivotal role in Greek foreign relations, and she maintained succeeded in maintaining uh, a rather good reputation with the Greek public. Uh, Germany became a driving force in the process that led Greece uh, to her full membership of the EEC. Now these things, especially uh, good publicity, uh, stands in contrast to the US. Uh, but by being able, so to say, to fly under the radar, uh, radar, a bond could, I think, exercise an influence in a way that was much more discreet to the eye than the one of the U.S. That she was able to do that probably also was welcomed by the U.S., at least in the second half of the 70s, uh, because while Caramel Lees had to give in to strong anti-American sentiments in Greek society and politics, he could lean on West Germany in a process that would further tie Greece to the West. Thank you very much.